To pass your FP exam, you do not just need to know the knowledge, the concepts, and the right problem solving skills to tackle FE type problems. You will also need to develop the right test taking strategy. Hello, this is Farooq, your lead instructor and tutor here at DirectUp. Today we're going to talk about something a lot of students take for granted. It involves building the right test taking strategies they can apply on exam day. And what differentiates those students that pass or fail their FE exam is those students that pass do not only know the knowledge, do not only know the concepts and the right problem solving skills, they have efficient test taking strategies. Those that fail tend to know the knowledge, they're good at the concepts, they have the right problem solving, but they neglect developing their test taking strategies that they can apply on exam day. First tip, when you're doing time practice quizzes, full length practice exams, and the actual FE exam, as soon as you start, only do the problems you feel good about first. Flag the rest for review. Flag, flag, flag. This is because if we are solving the hard problems and we're getting stuck on those from early on, naturally, we're gonna feel overwhelmed, frustrated, flustered, and stressed out. We want to avoid that from the very beginning. From the very beginning, meaning those morning topics, the morning section. So as soon as you start, if you miss the first one and you feel stuck on it, flag it. Second one, flag it. Third one, flag it. That's normal. And I vividly remember on my exams, I did not know the first two problems they were hard and I did attempt it, I did skim it, but then I got stuck. I did not waste time on those. I knew there's one coming that I can do, one coming that I feel comfortable about and that was my mentality. I had to take a deep breath, recollect my thoughts and move forward. Flag those first two, went to the third one and luckily I did solve that. I felt good about that one. Whether I got it right or wrong, doesn't matter. I just felt confident and I felt like I did the right solution for the third one. It's totally normal to get stuck, especially on the first few. You want to flag them, don't get hung up on those, and only do the right problems that you feel good about first. Number two, if your calculator can do it, let your calculator do it. Think of your calculator as your ultimate tool to speed up your workflow. So you're solving problems faster by relying on the calculator. In my civil FP review course, this is what I always stress. If we can use the calculator to solve a problem, we're gonna use it because this saves us time. We're gonna let the calculator do the thinking for us. And we know the calculator does a lot of powerful functions. It does statistics, it does mathematics, integrals, derivatives, normal distribution, binomial distribution, vector operations, matrices, does all of that. So we're gonna take advantage of that to save precious exam time. So we're gonna solve problems faster, save exam time, and that time we can use to allocate for those problems that cannot be solved using the calculator. Third tip, slow it down. This might sound contradictory to you because you're thinking, this exam is timed. I'm under the time pressure. I cannot slow it down. I need to go fast. But going fast does not make sense if we're making silly mistakes. If we're misreading a problem statement, not knowing exactly what we're given, not knowing precisely what we need to find, and where we're really unsure what we're given, what we need to find, we don't have a good idea of what's really going on, it doesn't make sense to go fast and just get into the solution. A common trap I see hundreds of students do is read the problem statement fast, skim over it, and immediately jump into the solution. We're solution oriented. We need to unlearn that. We need to focus on slowing things down, read the problem statement little by little, Break down exactly what we're given and write what we're given. As we practice, let's write what we're given when doing quizzes, when doing practice problems, and let's make that a habit. Write the givens, write precisely what we need to find, and have a good idea of the overall situation at hand. 
And when we have that overall idea, good understanding of that problem statement, we're going to follow an approach that's likely to be the right approach. Whereas if we don't, if we misread something, we don't know what's really going on, we don't know the big picture, we don't know what we need to find, we're going to follow an approach that's likely to be the incorrect approach. So it's in that problem statement. The solution, the determining factor is really what we have in that problem statement, what we're given and what we need to find. And then naturally we're going to follow a route or an approach that's going to be the right approach. That's what matters the most. So slow it down with reading problem statements, slowing down when writing your solution, do your best to avoid making silly mistakes. Fourth tip, trust your instinctual reasoning and avoid second guessing yourself. So what does second guessing mean? So let's say you're going through the actual FP exam. You're on another problem. You go through a solution and you have a reasoning. You get to a final answer in your solution, but it's not one of the answer choices, multiple choice. It's not one of those, but what you're going to do is pick the closest answer. And that's what I recommend. Pick the closest answer, but flag it for review so you can come back to it. Maybe you can check a silly mistakes, an arithmetic mistake, you didn't square a term, it could be just about anything. We're gonna flag that for review. Now we get to the stage where we're reviewing that morning section, let's say. We're reviewing that specific problem, and then we're gonna go back to the solution, try to catch our mistake, but if we can't really catch anything, what do we do? A common trap is second guessing. Do not second guess yourself. Let's say between two answer choices, three answer choices. Do not just randomly choose one because you already chose the answer choice based on something objective. You had an instinctual reasoning as to why you chose the first answer. So I recommend sticking with that answer unless you have a legitimate reason why you're changing the answer. So avoid second guessing unless, unless you have a reason to actually change the answer. Last tip for the day. When you feel overly anxious, when you hit a mental block, when you hit a mental wall, where your mind is starting to wander off, where you can't focus on the exam, I want you to know this is absolutely normal. What you're going through is absolutely normal. And I want you to embrace this state and to embrace your anxiety. Do not continue with the exam. Do not try to force things. I want you to stop. It's worth it. Put a pause, stop everything you're doing, FE exam related. And what I want you to do is practice certain techniques. We're going to talk about certain breathing techniques and also proactive thinking. So in terms of the breathing techniques, you might already know a few good ones, but let me recommend a very simple one for you. As soon as you stop and as soon as you recognize you're in the state, practice a breathing technique where for the first inhale, you're going to inhale for six seconds. So you're going to do that for six seconds on the first inhale. Then you're going to hold that, hold that for another six seconds. Then you're going to exhale for six seconds. So inhale for six, hold it for six, then exhale for six. That's one round. You're going to do this at least five times until you realize, okay, you're starting to get back in the present. You're back at that screen and you're back to doing your best at solving that practice problem. So that's a breathing technique, which is absolutely worth your time to do. No matter if you lose the FE exam time, it's totally worth it because now you're back at the present and you're going to try your best to solve as many as you can with the time you have left. And if you get stuck again, do it again and practice that same breathing technique again. So that's the breathing technique. And then we have proactive thinking. So a lot of the times, a mental block, anxiety, is due to certain thoughts that we might have. These are intrusive thoughts, and we need to start practice replacing them with more proactive, realistic thoughts. For example, 
when you're stuck, stop and really tell yourself that it's okay to not do good on this exam. It's okay to fail this exam because you can retake it no matter what. You can tell yourself, I'm gonna do my best at solving the next practice problem and if I do bad, I'm gonna survive it. You can tell yourself that my life will go on no matter whether I pass or fail this thing. You can tell yourself that this is only an exam. It does not define whether I'm a good or bad engineer. It does not define whether I'm smart, not smart. All of that is nonsense. And these are the statements, these are the proactive, realistic statements that we should be practicing as we practice through our preparation, as we practice through the full-length practice exams, and the same thoughts that we'll have with us on exam day.